Today you are going to learn how to make this simple but excellent balsa wood free flight glider. We start with the plans. This design was from someone called Wallace Simmer and it was designed in the 30s. You can download the plans from the description of the video. We are going to need balsa wood of 3mm thick for the wings, 2mm thick for the fuselage and 1mm for the tail surfaces. The first part of the process is very simple and it's simply to cut all the pieces from the plans. Then we transfer the shape of the templates to the balsa wood and cut it out. Remember to use very sharp blades to make precise cuts and not to damage the wood. The fuselage is made of two sheets of 2mm, that makes it stronger and will stand a lot of heats. And I know you are very smart, you know that you have to cut the tail surfaces, just like we did with the wings. Now having the pieces all cut out, especially the wings, we are going to sand them. We have to give them an airfoil shape to make them more aerodynamic. The recommended airfoil in the plants is this one, but to achieve that shape, we have to sand the wings a lot, with patience. But I'm going to sand the wings with a generic airfoil shape, and that should be enough. Sure, it won't have the same performance of the original glider, but it'll fly very good. To accelerate the process, I'm using a knife, but I recommend always using the sandpaper. After an intense sanding, the leading edge turns round and the trailing edge becomes sharp. Now it's time to join the fuselage pieces, sand it, and also sand the tail surfaces. Now is the moment to join the wings, and because they have a very pronounced dihedral, I'm going to cut them at the root with a little angle, so they can fit perfectly. And then I use common glue or wood glue to join the wings. This is more flexible for this application than CA glue and it won't snap after a few hits. The problem is that we have to let it dry overnight for at least 10 hours. Following the plans to put the wings at their correct dihedral angle, we have to put one of them flat on the table and the other should have its wingtip at an elevation of 88 to 90 millimeters. So put something underneath the wing and let it dry. The next day our wings are joined and you need to cut off the axis. It's important that you align the wings very precisely when you glue them to avoid an erratic flight path and irreversible imperfections in the structure. Now is the time to put our glider together. For that, we are going to hold the fuselage on the table as aligned as possible. At the moment of placing every surface, it's important to check the alignment and symmetry using the string technique and also the roller. If you detect any misalignment, you have to act quick, 
before the glue dries. Correct it and then apply more glue and shake it again. And now I'm going to place the wings and it's the same process. The only different thing I'm going to do is to clean out the excess glue from below the wing and make some scores or indentations of the fuselage to make the glue able to hold well. Also, make sure the fuselage is perpendicular or at 90 degrees to the table. And the rest of the process, it's the same. The more you check the alignment using the string method and the roller, the better. Always do it before the glue dries. And the last surface I need to place is the vertical stabilizer. From now on, I'm just going to add some extra glue in the joints of the wings and the fuselage and then carve out the hook where I'm going to place the rubber bands to catapult the glider. And finally, you have to balance it in its center of gravity. This is just a starting point of balance. It might change when we test the glider, launching it and changing its weight. The catapult that uses rubber bands is so simple that it doesn't need an explanation. It's the moment of the tests. First, we need to hand launch it and see how it flies. If it goes down like that, try first removing a bit of weight from the nose. Or bend the horizontal stabilizer upwards a bit. Also try curving or bending the wings down to generate more lift. And now, let's launch it with the catapult. Of course, these free flight gliders need a lot of tuning to fly well. So in every launch, observe its behavior and modify it accordingly, like changing the weight or moving a bit the surfaces. It's better to fly in very calm days, with no wind. Even a slight wind will make it fly poorly and it can take it away from you. I almost lost it at some point because of that. Now I'm going to finish this project with some protective coating on the wood. I'm using Easy Dope, a coating product especially designed for model airplanes. This will protect the wood from getting wet 
and it will give it a soft and shiny finish. And lastly, I'll use some model paint to create a simple design on my glider. Then I use some masking tape and print some letters that I want to paint on my glider. And finally, our design is finished. I hope you've liked this project. Remember that you'll find everything you need in the description of the video, like the plans. For now, I'll see you in the next project.